Hey Stone Roadie Show fans, I'm Shelby Barrett, the official Stonette for the Stone Roadie Show, and this is Saturday Night Special with Craig Reed and Kathy Godsey. Stone Roadie Show Podcast 128 Action. Hi everybody, welcome to this Saturday night special evening edition of the Stone Roadie Show with Craig and Kathy. Craig asked me to do the opening for this show because he's still recovering from celebrating from his birthday last night. <laughs> and I have to tell you, he was not ready today when we, uh, at, our, at our appointed time, and he's pretty grouchy. So I said, I said, what are you so grouchy about? He said, because everybody was calling me all day yesterday and calling me this morning to wish me happy birthday. And everybody's sending me all these presents and I don't need nothing. <laughs> I said, would you be, would you be happier to be a 73 three year old in a nursing home with nobody to love you? So <laughs> then knock it off. Stop being so grouchy. So anyway, <laughs> as we know, Craig's birthday was yesterday, Groundhog Day. And Craig did his um his morning show and he was dressed up like a groundhog. Oh nice, Craig. Looks like you had a nice <laughs> night. So why don't you tell us before now we have a great guest here, Yogi Cole. And I know I'm so excited to have Yogi, but I'm sure Yogi wouldn't mind if Craig just talks about how he celebrated his birthday yesterday. <laughs> And what time he got to bed? <laughs> what did you do? And did you see your shadow, Mr. Groundhog? <laughs> no, I did not see my shadow, and neither did Punk and Donnie Phil either. Yeah, I said, yeah, it was pretty dreary here, and and I don't understand that rule. How about if you if you don't see your shadow, we're going to have uh, early spring? You know, it seems like it would be the opposite. You know that. If the sun was shining and you seen your shadow that would have an early spring, but it's backwards from that. But from what I understand, Ponsicani film is wrong much more than he's right. So anyway, yeah, but yeah, I had a pretty good birthday. I had people calling me all day. Mike Estes called me. I hadn't heard from Mike Estes in quite a while. He, he was supposed to write that song for us. And he, and he said, man, we, we had that all thing all set up and ready to record. And a, and a dang tornado come went, went through there and, and blew his studio down. Oh, my <laughs> that's God. That's not funny. But, uh, yeah, that's what happened. He was about up to record it. And, it, and a, a tornado went through there and blew all of his equipment up and stuff. So he's uh, been trying to put that together. Plus, he, he's had COVID four times. You'd think he would be uh, immune to it by then. And then he's had, uh, what else did he have? Pneumonia or something? Yeah, he's been really sick. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I guess he's better now. And he's uh, going to have his studio put it back up together. And he said he's going to write us a Stone Roadie theme song. And uh, he's going to come on and do a Stone Roadie show here pretty soon. So we'll be looking cool. looking forward to that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I had people stopping and start stopping over about, uh, I don't know, 4 o'clock yesterday. And, and uh, yeah, Sammy, Sammy, come by. Sammy, Sammy, uh, he collects bourbon. And he, he brought this bottle of bourbon. It's some kind of special Crown Raw is limited edition, I guess, and uh, came with this really cool, oh, got all stuff, box here like that. And then, and then you know, most Crown Royal bags are, uh, are purple, but this one's kind of almost like leather. Boy, it's pretty cool, yeah. That's nice. And uh, Dave was here, and I was, we were opening this up, you know, and he goes, what are you going to do with the bag? I said, I'm going to keep the bag. He said, what are you going to do with the box? I said, I don't know why. He said, well, sign it, and I'll, and I'll, I'll sell it. And I goes, well, you know, thanks for the idea. And I'll, sign, I'll sign the box, and I'll, I'll give it away on the, on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who wants, wants the box, but, uh, my, my whiskey bottle came in. I'll sign it, and uh, send it to you. <laughs> What do they have to do? Send a postcard, or what are they going to do? No, uh, I, you know, well, I maybe we'll make that a part of the next giveaway or something. I don't okay. know, but, but um, 
Dave, Dave, our our disciple, Dave, he sends me all kind of stuff. He he sent me one of some of these pictures here. And nice. I think maybe we'll we'll give away away one of these. That's uh, from the Fox. And while I'm talking about Dave giving me stuff, he's uh, 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 give me this box here. Sent me this box. It's a <laughs> that's so yeah. cute. And that is, and it's a and it's a cannabis humidor. It's pretty cool. And then he <laughs> then he sent me uh oh yeah, this this rolling tray here. <laughs> it's got Gary and Larry Steele in it. Yeah, smoking for MCA records. <laughs> Very clever. Very clever. Yeah. And then and then he sent me this uh this bigger rolling tray. <laughs> and, uh, oh my gosh. Oh gosh, yeah. And he sent me this t shirt. Now, I don't know if you, many of y'all pay attention, but I, I, this is only like the second time I've ever worn a t shirt on the, on the, on the Stone Roadie show. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, Dave, I uh, really appreciate this T-shirt. It's really cool, but uh, it's an extra large. <laughs> and, and the shoulders, right? That's the shoulder there. The shoulder is supposed to be up here. So that, so, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I normally wear a size medium shirt, you know. So, yeah, if you send me a large, that'll, that'll be plenty big enough to make sure it fits me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and he'll send you I another did. one. He's such a generous <laughs> guy. Dave, and then I'll, medium, uh, medium, please. <laughs> yeah, if you have any largest, you can send me a large, and then I'll, and then I'll give this shirt away on the, oh, as a giveaway. It's a really cool shirt. I'll try not. Now wait a minute. Did you say you want to say a medium or a large would fit you better? A large. Or I wear a me. I wear a medium, you know, but sometimes a medium is a little snug on me, you know. Okay. And uh, yeah, being seventy three years old, I shouldn't be wearing muscle shirts anymore, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. A large is plenty safe. Yeah, large fits me. Okay. Yeah, I, can, I can still wear a medium, but sometimes they're a little smaller. But yeah, large is plenty big enough for me. I'm just I'm skinny, you know. <laughs> I like to think I well, am. Craig, you know, the shirt I'm wearing, Dave sent me this Leonard Skinner shirt I'm wearing, and this is a medium, and. Uh, <laughs> So he he's really nice guy. Thanks so much, Dave. You're amazing. And I just want to show everybody what I got in the mail yesterday. I came home and there's this big mailing tube on my front front porch. And Dave made this for me. This is amazing. It's like a heavy duty vinyl with a with grommets in it. And it's an Alan Collins poster. This, this is so nice. And as everybody knows. I love Alan Collins. So that was really, really nice. Thank you so much, Dave. You're a great guy. And I'm going to send you something from New Jersey, <laughs> whether or not you like it, <laughs> or maybe New York. I just want to comment real quick before we start talking to, uh, with Yogi that we have quite a combination of um, accents today. <laughs> I'm the New Jersey girl. Craig, we're from Ohio. And then um, Yogi has He's a got a pretty bit. sick uh, thick southern <laughs> draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty heavy accent, so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> who, who everybody can uh, understand the most, but um, I guess people from New Jersey will be able to understand me. People from Ohio, uh, Craig, and then people down south will be able to understand Yogi. But pretty cool. So I'm so glad. So Craig, I'm glad you had a nice birthday and i'm sorry you were a little grouchy when i called you at 1 30 i said are you ready no i'm not ready <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was my birthday i was like oh sorry <laughs> but anyway um thank you for um thank you so much for joining us yogi and let's get right into it if you don't mind he's so he's so well, hold on a minute i'm not i'm not done showing off the things that i oh, got in the uh, mail sorry. today here here i got the stickers <laughs> Stickers oh. we're going to start selling here. Yeah, I, that's how many I got right Ooh. there. So Ooh, supposed to nice. be a hundred of them in here. And I've already had people inquiring about they want them. So, yeah, we're going to. 
out of these yeah. 25 uh, stickers, we should be able to, at uh, 20, uh, 100, 100 stickers at 25 bucks a piece, I think that's $2,500 we can get for the forgotten survivors. So, uh, yeah, that will be pretty cool. And then I, I got to, you know, um, I got to uh, at least acknowledge the, so a couple of the people that I, I got cards from, you know, from – for for my for my birthday, there's. I, I guess that's a groundhog. <laughs> where, where are the people but, find the cards? But that's from Jeff Jeff Marconet, um, and uh, happy birthday, wake and bake. Hope to, hope to meet you one day and uh, talk, Skinner. Enjoy your day. I. I have not missed any podcast. Keep them coming. Everybody always says that they've watched every one. That just, you know, it's amazing. We, you know, we got we only have a couple thousand uh, subscribers, but they, you know, they they, they seem to. Well, everybody's watched every one of them. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, oh, here I'm so strong, going slow. And. Uh, how old did you say you are? And oh, wait a minute! There's something flying out of that. Uh, oh, well, of course, it's gonna fly somewhere where I can't find it. <laughs> but anyway, this is from. Um, oh God! Oh, here it is! Whoa! That I found that. <laughs> uh, who is this from? Uh, Pete. Is this from Pete? Yeah, this is from uh, Pete. And I can't even, I can't remember. Get my microphone back here. <laughs> Pete, uh, C-I-M-I-N-O. Pete Camino. And uh, God, looky here, looky here. <laughs> he sent me 50 Whoa. bucks. I can't believe wow. people are sending sending me money, man. I, you know, uh, Kathy can tell you I don't like to get gifts. <laughs> well, sometimes I do, but <laughs> as a as a rule, I I don't like I don't accept gifts very well. I don't know why. Um, and then here's another one from uh, uh, Warren Henberry and. Uh, what do your birthday candles and farts have in common? Both are entertaining when lit with a match. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and he put and he oh put twenty gosh. bucks in there with that. Wow. Have a great birthday. Twenty bucks for you, uh for your enjoy uh for your oh. For you, brother, enjoy. No stems, no seeds that you don't need. Acapulco gold, the the weed for me. <laughs> 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 so cool. So thanks, everybody. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge people that do that. That's really nice. Send me of something. course. Really nice. Really. going to take your time to send me something like that. I'll certainly acknowledge it, you know. So go ahead. Yeah, I hate to interrupt you. Let's let's move on with the with the Saturday night special Stone Roadie Show number podcast number one twenty eight with uh, okay. with Yogi Cole. Yeah, there you Yay. go. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so Yogi had reached out to me a while back, and he said, "You know, I I was a friend of Bob Burns. I'd love to come on the podcast and." tell some stories so uh we got together and we've been talking and i'm so excited to have yogi on the show yogi um <laughs> you live in carter cartersville georgia yogi, is that where you're from yeah mm -hmm. okay so why don't you just tell us about a little bit about what you do for a living and i think you said you you travel by the dorville georgia uh dorville georgia studios every day don't you yeah yeah <clears throat> my route's in dorville which is the outskirts of atlanta i drive a roll off uh, dumpster truck on um, construction materials from job sites to landfills. Okay. Uh, yeah, I the building every day where the Studio One was. Really 
idea of our scared down off the coast. I think the first right. two out. Uh, but yeah, I go by there every day. Wow. Um, okay. And uh, you okay, Craig? He's still getting phone calls. He's gonna have to take <laughs> that. He's gonna have to take that phone off the hook. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Leave it off the hook, Craig. So, <laughs> so Yogi, um, he passes. He drives by uh, Doraville Studios every day on his way to work, Craig. Do you remember the Doraville Studios? Oh gosh, yeah, it's down there. Is that Waffle House still there? Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, sure right there is. on the corner. Yeah, yeah, the awful house. Yeah, right there on the corner, <laughs> right, right off the coast way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think the, you and the guys you said today is in there on Claremont Avenue, didn't you? When y'all was they was there recording up there, or was that before your time? Uh, we stayed at that Sheraton. Um, where was that Sheraton? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't remember the name of the Sheraton. Yeah, but I was, I stayed at with the band that was with the uh, Alan Collins band. Yeah, we we stayed at that okay. Sheraton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during that, yeah, and I, I had to stay. I, I I had to stay down at the Days Inn because I was dating the 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 desk clerk at the Sheraton, and we couldn't stay there. <laughs> I had I had to move down the road to that other hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so yogi why don't you tell us how you got to know bob burns how that all came about and how you guys became such good friends so how we met now oh i tried to shorten it up it's a long story but uh i had went down to jacksonville and uh was going down the lobby was going to the freebird cafe that Judah had opened at the time but it was raining out, out and on, and we heard some music in the lobby there at the lounge, and they were doing karaoke. So we went in, and I was in the karaoke at the time, and went in and started doing a lot of karaoke. And I was doing Skinner, and the delighted doing the uh, karaoke thing said, you need to go over and talk to my fiance. He grew up them guys. He knows his mom. So we sat down, and over a pitch of beer, we started talking. And, he, and all he talked about was Bob Burns. Bob Burns this, Bob Burns that, and all that, you know. And then he was, and I started talking about, it, you know. And I never, you know, like I said I've always been a big Skinner fan, and never had really thought much about that they had two different drummers, you know, to that night. And he's talking about Bob, you know, was with the band, then left, and then the Arms come in, but he loved him some Bob. So um, he he was telling me a story about when they was grow. He grew, like I say, grew up with that him and Bob, and I think Gerd, and that was all out playing. These little styrofoam airplanes you used to buy that had little metal tips on them. He said he threw one one time. He hit Bob and I. He had to go to Mark's room. I said, "Wow, we got to go, you know." Start telling stories. And but anyway, he said he had went off to the services to the army, you know, and um, to come back and they had done made it big. He said he walked in somewhere and heard him on the jeep boss. He said, "Wow, man, they made it big." But um, anyway, I told him. The, Two weeks after that visit, I told him I was going to go see the new Skinner in Atlanta at a concert. He said, well, if you haven't seen Bob, tell him Tommy Monk said hello. I said, man, what's the chance? You know, nobody's heard of Bob in 30 years, you know. So two weeks later, fast forward two weeks later, um, we went to the concert, and my neighbor had went with us. And um, Ted knew that had opened for the Skinner, I think, that night. And during the, uh, in between the shows, my buddy had walked, get a beer or something. He was walking out in the audience. I had let him wear a Ronnie Van Zandt shirt I had bought down at the Freebird Cafe. I had a big picture of Ronnie on the front. Well, apparently, Bob was out there in the audience somehow and said, hey, man, I dig that shirt. And took a picture with him and all that. And so he come up running and said, hey, man, I just met. You never guess who I just met? He said, I met Bob Burns. I said, oh, man, you crazy. Because he was mm -hmm. kind of mad because we we had four seats here, him, the wife, me and the wife, him and his wife, uh, like 15 rows back, Miss Stage. Pretty good seats. But I, ha I had scored front row seats for me and the wife. And they was kind of pissed because we was up there and they was back. I said, oh, man, you just lying, you know. He didn't think nothing of it, you know. So we watched a concert and everything. And after the concert, we went out and to the parking lot, it was Lakewood Amphitheater at the time. It's called something else. Now I'm down at Atlanta. 
we walked out there and he said, there he is out over in that nav Lincoln navigator. And I went over there. I said, oh man, that ain't, that ain't real Bob Burns. That's some kind of imposter or something, you know? Mm -hmm. so we up. Bob was sitting on the passenger side and his friend Jerry Patterson was driving <laughs> driver's side. And I walked up and he said, hey man, you look like Ronnie Van Zandt. And back then I did, you know? I said, oh man, everybody's always something that. So we just got and struck up a conversation. I said, Hey man, do you know a name guy, guy named Tommy Monk? He said, Yeah, that song. He hit me in the eye with an airplane. I had to go murder. I said, It's really him. It's Bob Burns. It's really him. <laughs> they started to come running out, you know, out the parking lots and stuff and gathered around us, you know. I bet there's 50 people gathered around us, you know, but me and Bob just kept talking. We stood there probably, I don't know, a couple hours talking, man. They couldn't get in, interrupted us. So they finally went on, you know. <laughs> so we just hit it off, man. Just, I mean, just, it clicked, you know. Uh, we just hit it off, and uh, he said, man, I want you to come up and have dinner with me tomorrow. And the next day, I was eating dinner with Bob Burns. I couldn't believe it, man. I said, wow. man, what, what's the odds of that, you know? Uh, but, yeah, that's how we met, actually. And we just, man, it just, it was destined to be. It's one of those things that was meant to be. It really was. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just started hanging out, man, and we began closer than brothers, you know. Me and him was closer than me and my own blood brother. And, uh. It was just one of those things it was meant to be, I guess. Oh. But it, it was wild uh, how we met. And, uh, uh, so you think that's divine intervention, do you? Oh, I know it was. Oh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I have that. I tell the, about a divine intervention all the time. My whole, my whole history from Skinner on has just been divine in for intervention as far as i can see it it was just meant to be it just just oh, yeah. just fallen in place just so so perfectly and it just had to be written that way it's just you know it'd be really coincidental if it was just all a coincidence you know the thing oh, yeah. about ed king especially you know because ed had just got with a band and ronnie was really you know, an intimidating character, you know, and for, for Ed King to, to just meet me out of the cold blue and ask me if I want a job and then go to Ronnie and ask Ronnie to hire a, a Yankee knowing how Ronnie <laughs> is. And Ronnie <laughs> flat out told him, are you out of your mind? You know, that, I mean, he's a Yankee, you know, but <laughs> you know, but I mean, he was a nice guy, but he goes, you know, I got friends back in Jacksonville that I've been promising a job with a band for years and years, you know, now, now you want to bring in some Yankee, you know, and Bob, Ed said, I think he'll work out great. And, and, and Ronnie said, well, he better, I'm going to whip your ass, you know? So <laughs> my God, I mean, who, who, who would, anybody that knows Ed would, would tell you that, that, he just that, that that was meant to be, you know. I mean, for him to hire me like that, and just so many, so many different things that happened to me have just happened in that way, you know. I guess I was meant to survive that airplane crash too, and and be here on the Stone Roadie Show with Kathy Godsey and Yogi Cole, and now here's he's telling <laughs> telling how he was had divine yeah. intervention happen to him too. I mean. Oh, holy yeah. Jesus, holy Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even went further than that, I shortened it up because the year before I had went down, uh, like I said, I've always been one of the biggest skinners, biggest skinners there ever was since 74, I heard Sweet on Alabama. And, you know, growing up and everything, once I started driving, going out partying, all my friends were out riding with me, you know, and they said, man, don't you know there's other music besides Skinner? I said, not in my car, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear Skinner. Right? Yeah. And uh, I had come in for work, like I said, a year before I met Bob. I'd come in work one Friday and been driving all over the line all day, you know. And I told the wife, pack your bags. She said, why? I said, we're going to Jacksonville. She said, why? I said, we're going there to see where the Skinner guy grew up, you know. So we went down there. Me, her, my brother-in-law, I think my two daughters, and we got there at like midnight or something. We didn't know where we was going. I hadn't been to Jacksonville since I was a little bitty kid. We was riding down through the streets and everything. And we stopped, got a motel in the middle of the night, like I said. And I got up the next morning and I just flipped through the phone book and I seen it was Coach Leonard Skinner 
name the phone boy. I said, it can't be Coach Leonard Skinner. I'm serious. I'm going to call, I'm gonna call him. So I called him. <laughs> I said, is this Leonard Skinner the coach? He said, yeah. I said, is it, are you Leonard? He said, no, he's back there wrestling. Can I help you? This is Gene. I didn't know. I said, oh, look, man, I said, I'm one of the biggest. I, I'm not no stalker or nothing like that, but I come a long way down here to see where this Skinner got. No, I grew up and everything. And um, just and I seen Coach Skinner's number in here, just give him a call. And uh like to find the grave sites and all. He said, Oh, he started telling me, he said, You don't know you ain't been by the graves now? I said, I don't know where they're at. We was one block from Ronnie's crib and didn't know it. And I mean it was just meant to be. So and then he started telling me, he said, Have you been to the house and all this? And so he gave me all the addresses. Nice as guy ever will be, you know. He said, If you have any problems, give me a call back. So we had problems finding Alan's grave. Call him back and put it right on me. But I didn't know at the time, but I believe it was Gene Oden because I think him and Gene Oden was, you know, doing something together at that time. Because, like I say, a couple years later, once I did meet Bob, and this, like I say, he's making that a longer story, but he had went down to Jacksonville and Gene was there, and Bob said, Hey, yo, I got somebody I want you to talk to, see if you know who it is. It was Gene Oden. Gene said, Hello? I said, Gene Oden. He said, How do you know who I was? Because I remember the voice. <laughs> How do you know who I was? He freaked him out, you know. And I guess to this day, he don't realize that happened. That happened. Yeah, that's how I knew him, because I knew I remember his voice. So it was one of those things it meant to be, you know? That's uh, how Kathy Godsey uh, got in, kind of involved with this whole thing was through Gene Odom as well, you know? So yeah. that's, yeah. you know. Well, same, same thing with me, Yogi. When I was, um, I was determined I was going to meet Alan Collins. I mean, there's yeah. nothing was going to stop me. And, um, uh, you know, I remember, um, well, so on the back of the Nothing Fancy album, or in, there was an insert, and it had the Leonard Skinner Realty sign. So I oh, called yeah. that number and um, said, let me talk to Leonard Skinner. He wasn't here. And then she gave <laughs> me the address. So I wrote a letter to him. He wrote back to me. He sent me this really nice T-shirt. And I still have the letter. He gave me Gene Odom's address. I said, I want Alan Collins' address. <laughs> he said, I don't have that, but I'll give you Gene's address. I wrote to Gene. Gene wrote me back. He said, if you ever come to Jacksonville, look me up. So six months later, my friend and I, we went to Florida. And I said, you know, we're going to Jacksonville. So we rented a car. <laughs> and we looked up Gene. All, everything, all, all that stuff was in the phone book. Gene, yeah. we actually went to the Skinner, Mr. Skinner's uh, real, real estate office. He was there, came outside. He took pictures with us. Then we called Gene. It was the greatest thing. It was all, this yeah. was 1980. But mm -hmm. everything was so easy to to access and then luckily yeah. gene took me to alan's home and alan luckily alan was home and that was mm -hmm. just unbelievable i mean i just couldn't believe it but yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, it was like you if you're determined you just drive down there. and actually there's another guest he he wants to come on the show george festo when he's ready he actually is from pennsylvania he just drove down to jacksonville years and years ago when alan was in the hospital he drove right down to the riverside studios he walked in, he saw Larkin there, and Larkin said, go visit Alan in the hospital. And he went to the hospital and he met Alan. And wow. he has a cool story about having met Alan. And Alan was so cool. And Larkin said, if you're going to go meet Alan, go get him some of these candy bars, because he loves these candy bars. So George <laughs> went and got him the candy yeah. bars. <laughs> but I want to get him on the podcast. But it's so cool. You know, it was so easy back in those days to just look him up in the phone book and go find them and meet them mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now a lot of them are gone oh but, yeah um, you know and, and, i feel and blessed I, when i met bob i couldn't believe you know because I, I, growing up and everything like i said i, I listen to everything. Yeah. thing i feel like i should know these guys you know it's somewhere in the back of my mind i guess it's like this I and, and, and when i once i got him and met him and and, and got to know him and he was just like me you know and i was just like him always having the same kind of backgrounds and kind of you know i mean not you know, as far as music or whatever. It's just like I, I was, you know, know they tell all these years. And I, yeah. I, was, yeah. I was just normal, everyday person. You never, if you didn't know who he was, you didn't know he was that famous unless you knew who he was, you know? Yeah. Because guys let the money go to their head. You know Ronnie Van Zant was, Ronnie Van Zant was exactly the same way. People, mm -hmm. people would always ask me, if, if, did, would, to meet Ronnie, would you, perceive him him to be a 
a, a rock star like he was and i and i was in not at all you know it's just like bob yeah he just like and just like anybody else or alan or gary or or all of them were like that they you know they didn't you, you know that you'd have never known you know, <laughs> you know? and you know yeah. and, you know, unless you'd know who they are, you'd never know. Artemis the same way, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But, yeah. It just blew my mind when I did yeah. meet him. You know, we hit it off so well. And again, be the very best of friends. He, even family, because, you know, he he became part of our family. And uh, I even gave him his own bedroom at my house, you know. <laughs> okay. As a matter of fact, my wife had come stay with us like three months when they was in between the royalty checks at one time. And uh, I gave him a bedroom, keep one, my youngest daughter out of her bedroom, my go to the other daughter's bedroom, and gave Bob his <laughs> own. And uh, they say it was like three months, and they was working on a book at the time that they was going to put out, which it never happened. And like I said, the videos I've got, we were sitting at my you know, dinner table putting a book together, and I still got the outline somewhere of the book that never come out. But I know the story, you know. Uh, you know, we're, we got two up so far, and I got – Bob on home movie telling some of the stories on you know home movie clips. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put all that together one day and finish it. Uh, a full documentary about Bob just telling literally scaring stories, telling jokes, being crazy just as Bob is, and also mm -hmm. him playing the drums a little bit, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get if I ever get the time to do it, you know, just working all the time, it's kind of hard to do anything like that, but uh. Well, what did what did what did what what did uh, Bob ever say about Leon? Because him and Leon always oh, Leon. Leon always him. cut up, and him and, and yeah. Billy, uh, Bill, Billy and and Bob and Billy and Leon always used to cut up a lot, you know, on the road, you know. Yeah, but, I believe Leon was Bob's favorite of all of them. I really believe it was. He yeah. he, he was real fond of Leon, really was. Yeah. All of yeah. all the guys, he loved them all. You know, it was all. You know, like brothers, but Leon, yeah, was one of his favorites. You know. Did he ever yeah. talk about Joe Barnes, the the roadie, but he called Goosh? No, 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 not really much. No, no, uh, uh. Most, uh, most of he talked. Or, or Kevin? Did he ever talk about Kevin? Kevin Olson, um, a little bit. I can't remember a lot about. It, but he, I remember he, you know, talked about a little, about all, pretty much. You know, he's talking yeah. about. Uh, well, he they he he's he's kind of the one that did he ever specify how he was kind of the one that introduced all Ronnie to uh, uh, to uh, well kind of knew Alan and and knew knew most of the guys in the band that kind of was a contributing factor to put them all together as one. Uh -huh. I don't. I don't know. I, Cause I know him and you know Bob, Gary, and Alan had went to school there. You know, Ronnie was a few years young, older than them, but. Uh, well, then, Bob kind of Bob kind of says that you know he he they you know him and Gary and Alan met uh, Ronnie met and then he was kind of go well I know a guitar player talking about Alan you know <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and then uh, but they like to say. Uh, him, uh, and Gary tells the story, and Bob tells us it's a little bit different. Gary says Bob got hit in the head with a ball. Bob said he actually got hit in the shoulder blades. He seen the ball come in and turn around. But yeah, Gary and Bob was at the, at the ball game together because, like I said, they 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 was in the same grade. And I think Alan might have been a year younger than Gary and Bob, but they knew each other. You know, I think he was in a, a grade below below Ronnie. I mean, Bob and uh, Gary, but uh, they knew Ronnie. But they just didn't hang out with me. You know yeah, they, yeah, they, they, I've <laughs> often heard that they embellished that story a little bit about the baseball game about getting Bob getting actually getting hit in the head and knocked him out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard oh, he, yeah. Did, yeah, he did get hit. Yeah. And I imagine it did hurt, but it didn't hit him in the head. <laughs> yeah, they say seen it coming. It's like a like a pill coming through the eye. I mean, the air turning around, not his breath. <laughs> Some of the stories about Little Skinner always get stretched. I see. You know? <laughs> Where did you hear that version of that story? It's kind of funny sometimes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I had to say this since we went on that fact. 
But I remember one time Bob told me, he said, Gary's a revisionist, and I didn't know what that word was. But uh, I think last year or two, when Gary got on there, was, he kind of proved it. He got on uh, one of the sites and said that Ricky Matlock was a man for three years, which, according to Bob, Ricky was the only play with him like six months, you know. So oh, really? Think it, yeah. I had always heard Ricky was really highly involved with the band prior to 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 the to, to them getting you know record deals and stuff but uh, yeah. yeah yeah i'd be interested to hear what bob said about that yeah well bob said what happened is um how ricky become a, a member for that short time bob's parents moved i think down to tampa and um bob's girlfriend he had time said you you just out here camping out in the woods or whatever and all this you not got you don't have a real job our friends have got Mercedes and the BMWs and, you know, you don't have a steady income and all that. She talked to him and going back to his mom and them and going back to school. So he went down to, to Tampa and that's when they brought in Ricky and Bob, I got him on video telling the story. He said he was done there, I think like six months. He was praying God said, Lord, I've messed up. I wish I hadn't left the band and all that. And everything they said, all of a sudden Gary called him and said, Hey man, would you like to come back to be in the band? And he said he was on the first bus back. And uh, him and Ricky double John, uh maybe a couple months after that. So Gary, I think he said Ricky was with him like eight months, maybe. And uh, but yeah, that's what I got him on video. And now, well, what's the deal with Shorty then? Shorty is uh, uh, is actually oh, Curtis Lowe. Lowe. Yeah, from what I understand. So I always thought that uh, Ricky was around during. During when the band would hang around with Shorty, I always assumed yeah. Rick was yeah. around because he grew, yeah, he hung, he grew, he grew up with his grandpa. Oh, yeah, yeah. They all hung around. Yeah, Shorty was Ricky's grandpa. And uh, they all used to hang around with Ricky, but I don't know as far as how far back. But yeah, they said Shorty is, you know, influence. Oh, that he just he just wasn't involved as a band member, of, right, 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 right. but yeah. about, but he knew everybody for yeah, yeah. forever and ever and ever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. He yeah. he knew everybody forever, but he was only a band member for about eight months. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. yeah, yeah. Oh, hmm. yeah. So um, so t you were telling me about what happened when uh, Artemis joined band. How did that? Uh, you know, how did that work out with Bob? You said they kind of brought Artemis in to watch him, or yeah, yeah. Bob said, you know, he they they knew that he, you know Bob was getting, you know, I guess uh, getting uh, what's called road fatigue. You know, couldn't handle pressure road and all that. And they knew Bob wasn't gonna last much longer. And Bob knew it. He said they brought Artemis in for like three months just to study Bob and try to learn to, to do everything Bob do. And, and Armist will tell you to, to this day, there's a lot of stuff Bob done he, he still can't do. But they would bring Ricky in and let him sit there beside, you know, beside the stage and watch everything Bob do and all that, you know, and, and try to, you know, play just like him and all that. And Bob said he, what really bothered him, the day he died, it really, it really bothered Bob a lot. They, they would let, Bob go out and work the crowd up, do the whole show. And then when it comes time to do the encore free bird, they let Armas go out and collect all the glory. And that really messed with Bob. Oh, wow. you know? And it really scarred him, you know. He, it, it, it still bought him to the day he died, really. As a matter of fact, when they went to the Hall of Fame to do the awards, uh, Gary wanted Bob to play free bird, you know. Bob played Sweet Home Alabama and Armas played Freebird. They're going to split it up. They want it the other way around. But Bob, I think that's the real one reason Bob went ahead and let Armas do Freebird because of that. I really do. Uh, yeah, it really, it really bothered him a good bit. I mean, a lot. And the way that they've done it is, you know, mess with Bob a lot. The way is, I don't know if it's the management or who, who, you know, done all that. The way they did it and it, you know, yeah, Barton, it, it really did. He, he tried to say it didn't play that like it did, but I could tell, and I knew. Mm. You know, me, me and him, I have a little talks, and just one on one, and, you know, a lot of stuff I won't tell, but, you know, yeah. yeah. It, 
And it, it wasn't Auburn, it wasn't Auburn's fault. It, you know, it's just whoever's call. I don't know who made the call or the way they did it, but you know, which you know, well, it well, all worked. Well, when we went to Europe, when we went to Europe, Ar- Artemis kind of lost it. You know, I mean, he, you know, he he threw a cat out the window in London. Oh, and, Bob. Yeah. Bob. Bob. Yeah. I mean, Bob. yeah, Bob. I'm sorry, yeah. Bob. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he he got us thrown out of a bunch of hotels, and he oh, yeah. he he went he went nut. He he even he even thought after he saw The Exorcist, you know, and he, yeah. yeah, he he uh, Billy him and Billy roomed together then, you know, and Billy mm-hmm. would lay in the other bed and going. Ah, ah. <laughs> And freak Bob out and stuff. Oh yeah, man, that was crazy. Yeah, Billy lay over there going, ah, uh, uh, yeah, and knowing Bob was freaked out about that whole thing. Yeah, and he was, yeah, he and we were in Europe, and Bob said thought, thought I was the devil and wanted to send me, you know, didn't want me around anymore. And Ronnie said, Ronnie told me, he said, man, just. Just don't let him see you, man. Just do what you do, and when he comes around, just go out and sit at the board at Kevin, and then when we're done, just come and pick the drums back together, and we'll see you in the next city. He said, because we're getting rid of Bob at the end of this Europe tour, you know. <laughs> and then and then, then what was weird was me and Joe Barnes rode on the airplane back to the United States with Bob. I'm on one side of Bob and Bob and Joe Barnes is on the other side of Bob and and Ronnie said if he gets out of control just knock him out and neither one of us wanted to go there because Bob's pretty tough you know oh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know he'd yeah. be hard to he'd be hard to knock out <laughs> but he he was on that airplane and he was going George Washington and and full of, the airplane was full of people you know. Abraham Lincoln and just screaming out loud, God bless America. You know, we were there a long time, though. You know, I mean, that was like the first time we went over there. And when we got off the airplane, we all got off the airplane and kissed the ground, man. We were <laughs> glad to get, no, so glad to be back in the United States because first time you go over there and stuff it's weird man i mean yeah you, you're lucky you're, you you can't wait if you're over there for a while you can't wait to get back <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he uh, yeah but we we had to ride uh, you know but yeah i don't remember a lot of that well, that transition you know after we brought him back you see, I don't even remember him being with the band after that at all, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he uh, finally talked to me one time. You know, Bob, there's a lot of stuff that but I want to know about Bob that when I go to start to ask my tell Bob and I just let it be, you know, and he'd basically tell me what I'd want to know later when he felt like it. But one night we was um, we were sitting we were sitting on the couch watching Freebird movie, and he started bawling like a baby. He said, yo, I should have been on that plane crash. I should have died with Ronnie. And I said, Bob, no. I said, the Lord took you out of that raising <laughs> man, raising, you know. I said, you, you know, you shouldn't have died. <clears throat> but he was talking about, you know, when he freaked out, when he flipped out, finally. He find, we were sitting there watching the, um, on YouTube, was watching the Skinner show when y'all was over there in 74. And he said, he pointed on the screen. He said, you see this guy standing behind that Marshall State? There's a guy standing there. I guess he was a tour the road manager or whatever over there. He said, I chased that guy down the road with a pitch. <laughs> and yeah, Russ busy. Emmerich. Russ Emmerich, he did. He chased him down the road with a pickaxe. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said he did. <laughs> Didn't want to come on, on the show. And he said, I wasn't going, yo. He said, they all started to chase me. He said, I'm running down the road. He said, I see this construction site. He said, I grabbed this pickaxe and went back and chased them off of it. He said, I wasn't going to do the show. You know, I <laughs> remember did. that. You know? Yeah, he, he did that. Yeah, he did. But as far as him leaving, <laughs> and coming back on the line, he, he don't remember. It's like he blacked out, he said. He, after that, he don't remember what happened. He woke up and uh, Chattahoochee Mental Hospital in Jacksonville. He don't, he didn't remember how he got back or who brought him back or anything. 
he he said he didn't remember none of that. Mm. Well, um, Yogi, t you were telling me about the song "Am I Losing." Uh -huh. Yeah, that was wrote about Ronnie wrote that about Bob leaving the band. Yeah, uh, Bob said it wasn't actually about the money, but yeah, he said that. Yeah, he he knew it was about him. Hmm. And then after the plane crash, you said um, Bob went over to Alan's house to get royalty money, right? Yeah, yeah, because for some reason he wasn't getting his royalties, and um, yeah, he went over and um, to try to find out about it, and um. Went over and said, Alan's real nice to him and everything. And said, Gary was an asshole to him. I said, no, you're not getting nothing. You know, I, I guess Gary might have had started having something to do with it or whatever. And then finally before he left. Yeah, Gary was the president of the, of the of the organization. He was the uh -huh. president. And, uh, and, he told, and he told Bobby, he said, if you get anything, it'd be out of kindness of my heart. But he eventually got him, you know, after that. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but yeah, I, I asked Ronnie that night. I mean, Bob, Ronnie, I'm sorry. I asked Bob that night when he was watching the free word and he started crying. I said, Man, do you and Ronnie ever make it up? He said, No. He never really talked Ronnie after he left Europe. So mm -hmm. they, you know, never really saw, you know, and that bothered him a lot too, you know. And yeah, Bob he told me a story one time. I, I, I don't know if I should tell it or not, but it's just me and him again. We was talking. And I can understand some of the stuff that he, it kind of caused him not to want to go into her. He had a girlfriend at one time. I don't know if it was before he was married or, or what. But he said this he was married was to Carolyn. Carol yeah, his, Carolyn. Carolyn. Yeah. Yeah. Carolyn, yeah. yeah and she, you know, he, it, him, and, him and her had a kind of a shaky relationship that kind of sent yeah. him off the edge, too, I think, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You know, Carolyn had two sons. He's got two biological sons nobody knows about. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, they're down in Jacksonville. Yeah. Car Carolyn contacted me, oh, God, five years ago or something and said, hey, this yeah. is Carolyn Burns. Yeah, and she was living down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I talked to her a couple few times on Facebook, and I think she called me one time and talked to me a while. I never actually met her in person, but, yeah, uh, she's still around. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she contacted me a few years ago and said, mm -hmm. I don't remember. You but know, yeah, I don't know. I I think it, before he got with Carolyn, but the girl didn't want him to go, was begging him not to go. And she actually took a, some gasoline, poured on herself, and caught herself on fire. Really? Whoa. Yeah. And I don't know. He never did finish the story because it was bottom too bad. That was after know. Carolyn? I don't know if it was before or after. Yeah, it had but, to be an after Carolyn, yeah. yeah. I don't know if she, the girl lived or died or he never did finish telling oh, wow. me. You know, and I can understand, man, you know, that, that really bothered me too, you know, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And, you know, uh, but, that, you know, everybody. So that was after he had his breakdown then, because he had his breakdown yeah. during Carolyn, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they they have two biological, biological sons. and uh, Oh, how old are they? they they've got, they've got to be. Wrong, yeah, well, my God, yeah, they've got to be 50 years old. Well, uh, they, they've got to be 40, third, at least 45 40, years old. Yeah, 40. about 45 something. Uh, his yeah, oldest son has, has a son. I, I, the youngest one, I don't know, but I talked to, uh, hang on just a minute. You know? Yeah. I, I got to plug my phone. I don't know why my battery is going down. I'm going to have go to plug ahead. my phone. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Me and Kathy can carry on. That's okay. <laughs> So, so you knew Carolyn then? So you knew? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I knew Carolyn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I sure did. Yeah. But did you? And did you know Marsha when he married Marsha? Marsha, I, uh, his, Bob, his, I didn't. Uh, never, I never knew no Marsha. I just only knew Carolyn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was. So I was pretty good time. friends with Carolyn actually. Yeah, we were good friends. And like I said, she called me about five years ago or something and said, "Hey, oh. this is Carolyn Burns." You know. Oh. And then, you know, just said she was living somewhere or whatever, you know. Okay. Okay. Go. Just want to know how I was doing and everything. And I said, God, it's been so many years, you know. My God, that's been 50, you know, it's been long. It's been a long time ago. Yeah. But I talked to his oldest son right after Bob died and everything. He's got, his oldest son's got a son. bob got a grandson. But um, I talked to his oldest son, and they, they, they want a private life there. We don't want to do because Bob never was around him or nothing. He said the best thing he learned for Bob is how to be a father 
Cause Bob never was. And I can relate. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, my father the same way. So yeah, I can, I can relate to him, but yeah, he's got two biological sons. Nobody knows about. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so then, so then when, um, so how did he meet Marsha and how did she come into play and her, she had a couple of daughters, right? Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah, she got two daughters. I think he met her in an AA meeting. I think he, he was telling me. Um, and the daughters, I think, were real young when they met. I don't know really how old, maybe five or six, something like that. And that's the Blue and Christian, two daughters. Uh, but, yeah, I don't, as far as when they met or whatever, how, I'm not really sure. I just I think, I think he remember he's. AA meetings, something. He was in the AA meetings a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, um, well, so you you said so, uh, you you were saying that so Bob and and Gary and um, three Alan, them, went to, Alan went to middle grammar school together, right? Was it grammar school? Two yeah, in the Robert Lee High School, I think. Yeah. Okay. And what were they? You're saying some some of the guys had nicknames. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, Alan, Alan's nickname was Razorways. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> Razorways. I guess because they're so skinny, and I don't know. <laughs> Bob's nickname was Horsehead, and I couldn't. <laughs> who was? Know. Who was Horsehead? Horsehead. Bob. <laughs> Bob. Bob. Bob Horsehead. Horsehead. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were sitting at this kitchen table a few years before he died, and he said, "Yo, you know, Bob loved. He loved his hats." He loved, he had cowboy hats, loved yeah. boots. He said, here, oh, try this hat on. And he put it on my head. It went all the way down here, over my ear. I couldn't hear <laughs> Yeah, he had a big head. You know, you hear the 10 gallon hat? He had 20 gallon hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I wore a seven and five eighths. I got a big old water head, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Craig is not asking for anybody to send him any hats. No, I have I have plenty of hats. No hats, please. I have plenty of hats. Yeah, I don't need. I don't need anything. Yeah, I don't need anything. Every once in a while, I get something that's cool. That you know, you know, yeah, go, yeah I, that's pretty cool. Jesus for survivors sent me some cool stuff. You know, he sends me yeah. some cool things. <laughs> <laughs> Dave sends me some cool things too. Our our disciple Dave. <laughs> yeah, and you like the coffee? Who sent you the coffee? Was that um? Oh, that was Angela. Me? Angela. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's very, very sweet. Very, very thoughtful. By the way, Angela. Oh yeah, she's darling. Yeah, very mm-hmm. nice. So uh, also, Yogi, you were telling me you have a little dog too. Yeah, that's my dog. Oh. I am talking to him, yeah, but he won't let me. Oh, <laughs> let's see him. He's a Yorkie, a full-size Yorkie. Oh, how cute. <laughs> He's Dixon, adorable. Uh, I, there's a story about him, but I, don't, I can't tell it. <laughs> it might be a little too dirty. Uh, well, I had inherited him when my dad died. Nobody wanted him. They wanted all the money and their thing, and they, but they didn't want dog, but I brought him home. They, oh, gosh. That's one thing I'm pretty much a guy. But, you know, I love him death. He's, he's a good dog. You did the best thing because that dog would have, you know, needed the love, and yeah, you know, you don't have to put him in a shelter. So you did the, you did the best thing. Yeah, it's bad when people want some man's money. He that man loved the dog more than he did live self when he died, and they trying to keep it out. I said, no, I brought it home with me. So that's awful. Yeah. So tell me the story about um, you said about the Red Rider, the Red Rider BB gun. Oh yeah, yeah. Ronnie had a BB gun. <laughs> Yeah, because I've heard, I, I, I watched about all your shows, Craig, and I, I remember seeing a lot of them about Alan with his BB gun. I know where he got that from because they was all at Ronnie's house <laughs> one, one, one day, and Ronnie had a Red Rider BB gun and started shooting people with it. Said people running, hiding on their tables, behind the curtains, on their bed, <laughs> going on the bed, and shoot them, you know. And I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Alan run out the door. You run behind, you're behind a tree, you know, it's hiding. And you see, he peeked around, and Ronnie shot, and he got him right between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh so I think God. that's where Alan got that from. Yeah, yeah. 
I hear that. <laughs> I hear that he would do that. And then what about when uh, uh, Bob stayed overnight at Alan's house? Oh, yeah, yeah so that's his enough. Mom? Yeah, Ava, I, I think that was real early. I mean, Ava might have still been in school when this happened. But wow. I, Bob had spent night with Alan one night. Miss Eva coming there and woke Alan up. And Alan had a rope. I mean, had a jump on the nightstand. Said, Eva picked him up. Said, Alan, what is this? What is this? He said, Reefer. She said, what? He said, Reefer. She said, what now? He said, Reefer. What refill? She's oh, and put it back down and not send walk back out. <laughs> don't refill, man. I don't know, but and that it was worked. the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of it. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. changing his background. You have you have one with Ed and, um with Bob in there, Craig. I'm I'm looking. I don't think oh. I do. No. Uh -uh. Okay. I have and then background. I got this on my Oh, <laughs> nice. Look at that. It's, wow. That was back, back in 2002. You know. Oh, that's a great picture. You do look a little like Ronnie there. You have that hat. Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I look, I, everybody's always told me back in the day. I'm out, I'm, uh, don't need more. <laughs> you could see how good friends you were by those pictures. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, it was, yeah. I mean, he, yeah. I don't know. It's, to me, it was like, you know, he was trying to relive the days with Ronnie well, through me or whatever because I was yeah. buying them up. Yes, I don't know. It's like when, you know, he called me and having the band started, I'd be, back, be up there singing and I'd turn around and look, he'd be just looking at me, you know, from back of the drums. Just reliving the day, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. we, what happens when Bob moved, stayed at the house? A, drum, a buddy of mine played drums, and we met this little guitar player. And, and in my basement, we'd get there and just mess around. And Bob was always there. And Bob, and we was going to be a southern rock group, right? Bob said, "Won't y'all be a Leonard Skinner tribute band?" So he taught us in doing all Skinner, and uh, and this so things happened. My drummer had left, and we were man, well. I'll tell you another story. A buddy, another buddy of mine, had come and. <laughs> We need a bass player, and he walked in, and this and my friend look, and he walks in, and he walked in. And Bob said, "Larry Drumstrom, you look just like Larry Drumstrom. He had long hair and hair thing. He does. He looks like Larry Drumstrom." <laughs> and then we asked him, "Bob, do you play in? We can play bass." He said, "I play a little bit." So we got a better guy and playing, and he ended up being our bass player after that night. And uh, but I forgot what I was saying now. <laughs> about the band, about starting the band. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the drummer ended up leaving. So we was in the pickle there, you know, for a while. And Bob said, yo, he said, you know, I played all over the world. I not I played shows over. He said, but I fell in as y'all's drummer. So you find out over to keep your chops up. And he did. He brought his drums over. And for like two months, he was, you know, so we keep a practice going, you know. And uh, I got a lot of video of that. I don't tell you, I got to put it together one day. Because he will tell us, you know, when, when he would watch us with practice, he told us that you need to get your tripod and put your camera up and record every practice. And so you can go back and see where you need to work on, you know, and you watch it and say, yeah, I got a lot. I got some footage of, of that, you know. So, uh, Yoga, I just want to just uh, mention that you have a YouTube channel. And yeah. uh, I check that you have some great videos so your youtube channel is just called yogi cole is that what it's called yeah yogi, yogi cole, cole. Yogi think, cole. Okay. yeah wild g-i-c-o-l-e you have some uh, great great videos, videos on there. yeah home and, videos and i already subscribed i'm going to say everybody out there should check it out and subscribe too because right, you've got sure. great yeah. great videos yeah because like i said in the near future i'll be putting more stuff on there but I've got a few clips of Bob telling stories, and I can sit here and tell you Bob's stories all day long, but it ain't funny to tell unless you see Bob tell it. He gets uh -huh. in the expressions, the hand motions, and that thing. Yeah. <laughs> and that. Craig, what are you doing? Craig, <laughs> Craig, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, the other day when I was doing the practice um, Zoom with, Yoga, he actually went around and showed me all those photographs that I said, I want a copy, please. I'll pay you for them. But you have some great photos, some of which I've never seen. 
look mm-hmm. like they're some of them are the ones that everybody's seen some of them are alternate poses are yeah. you able to show some of those like you did for the other night I'm trying to show you something. Uh, yeah. Take us for a little tour. This is really cool. Yeah. Now, these pictures right here is when uh, Marsh and Bob was at the house and they was working on the boat. Okay. These MCA had, well, let me turn around. Yeah. MCA had sent Bob these pictures and they was going to be in the book that we nice. was working on, but it never happened. He gave me a copy of all of them. Uh oh, my bear is going to live. Oh, Uh-oh. sorry. <laughs> Sure, if you want to plug it in, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got I don't be able. To. <laughs> mm. Oh Lord, I wish I knew. Well, I, I thought I had my phone charged all way up, but uh, I don't know if you can tell from there. Can you see? That's them? all right. It's all right. I don't want you to lose the connection, but you have some really uh, great pictures. If you lose your connection, just yeah, uh, I I think you can reconnect. Your link will still be there. Just reconnect. Yeah. That's a nice picture. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, maybe I go around while it's going off. Um, I don't know. It went on low mode. If I can get this cord I got here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm turning around. <laughs> but anyway. How big's, your, how big's your pool table? Got to move your finger, though, because your finger's blocking them. I got my little pool room here. That's just like four by eight. It's not just a play way, you know. Oh, wow. Well, uh, this nice is the very table. This is the very first picture Skinner to ever had made his group. I think it was 1964 or 65. They were still one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry Johnson, yeah. You know, you know, this is in Macon, Georgia. It blowed rolls. It was Dwayne Almond and Greg's beard now. Uh, oh, picture nice. of Bob. Oh, girl. Nice. This is also on Rose Hill Cemetery. That's the chapstick story. He's actually holding up a chapstick. He's telling a oh, wow. This is the muscle shows it. It does have Ricky in it. And this yeah. Uh, this is down the road for the announce. Uh, nice. Now, what what was the story with Gary? You said Gary was really sick in that picture. Yeah, he was hung over, and after he, they snapped his picture, <laughs> he went over there off the road and threw up. <laughs> what Bob told me. Look at those lucky pe- people in the background. Why? Oh, just yeah, it's, a, it's a general <laughs> story. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, they never oh, knew so. what they were doing, huh? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know how famous how famous they were going to be. Or, this is that, I think Barry Faye, I think his name was in Colorado. Spawn. Barry Faye, yeah, in Colorado. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And this is Hampton, Georgia. Uh, I've got a glare on it. Uh, you see it? Good? This is the one you love the most, wasn't it, Cass? Yeah, that's one I'd like to copy, please. I'll send you money. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want you to copy. Well, I want you to keep it as a gift. Don't sell it. Just for you, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's a great picture! Oh, oh my god, one, yeah, that's a good one. That's I'll a take good one. one. Take one of and those, this, please. <laughs> this one's a pond behind the grist mill down in Decatur, Georgia. That's my Did favorite. You I've never seen the, that. The grist, grist mill down there, Craig. When you was with them, down there off Claremont Avenue behind the wow. VA hospital. This is the picture of them standing in front of the grist mill. In the doorway, I have a video on my YouTube where me and my cousin went there, and I'm filming him telling about this. And we walk inside and all that. I used to have the pictures of what that, that may there. have been right before I got involved with them. I think uh-huh. it was because I, I, I didn't get involved with them until January, basically January 1974, right before they went to Studio One. I mean, I mean, uh-huh. rec- record plant. Yeah, and I think that was before record plant. But yeah, I got I had some pictures of them and saying inside it. Some a couple of them got stolen years ago. Uh, one of them was what is inside. That's that was Bob. Uh, after we met, uh, great on, picture. Set of drums. Uh, same night. This one. This one was took of me and him. Oh, nice uh, picture! Look at that. Wow. And my little scary shirt on. My little hat I used to wear on top of my head. He taught yeah. me how to wear a hat after that. <laughs> I'd wear one properly. 
They get turned around, sat right down, plug it back up. You know? uh, Very nice. Yeah. What did I do my children? See, you guys were really good friends. Oh, we was really tight. I mean, we were so tight, as my cousin said one time. Did you get out sit down? Yeah. Oh, we was tighter than a peanut butter sandwich run over by a dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter sandwich and what? <laughs> run over by a dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that saying in New Jersey. I don't know. <laughs> I've never heard that one either. That's a free <laughs> That's for the cat, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I tried- but I tell hey. you, I got a couple of funny stories. Oh, I got a funny story. We were sitting at the kids' table one night. Brand, like I said, Bob had a brand new navigator. It wasn't two or three months old. And we were sitting at the kids' table one night. He said, yo, you know, I want to go navigate, you know, go four-wheeling, off-road right, driving or whatever. He said, you know a place we go navigate? And I said, I know the perfect spot. So the next day, I took them across the Alabama line, and just miles and miles of log and dirt roads, putwood road, woods, where they just cut out putwood and timber. And he let me drive, of course, which I was his best friend, brother, bodyguard, slash driver. Every time I go, he let me drive. He's all right, you, you drive. And he was sitting in the passenger seat. We went up, and there was this hill straight up. We went up a hill, all you could see was sky, and they was all heart him. He was sitting beside me, and both the wives were in the back. It was all hard. <laughs> you know? And I was a little nervous, but I knew what I was doing. Got to top hill boss said, no, wait a minute, yo. Let me get in the back. <laughs> he put my wife up front. He got in the back. Going down the hill, they hollered, ah, we can see the ground. Straight up, straight down. We we made it through it all right. So we go down this little dirt road and everything. It's real muddy. And as Bob described it, a clump of mud pulled up. It was a little Vegas, Vegas station wagon with mud all over it. And there's young guys and say, hey, what are y'all doing out there in that brand new navigator? I say, ain't nothing. I got a little security in here. And the boss <laughs> said, oh, what? A million miles nowhere signing autographs. And yeah. <laughs> it blew cool. kids, man. You know, meet Blair Skinner's drummer out there in the middle of the woods, you know. That's a cool story. What was, well, tell me about the, you told me the hot pepper story. What happened? Oh, there? yeah, that's what I was going to tell you next. There was, <laughs> I think it might have been over at most of the shows. They were somewhere waiting. It. We are as one because Bobby said when they went to most shows and done the recordings over, they'd had to wait the wee hours in the morning, two or three o'clock in the morning after the big stars would do their thing because they was paying the big money to do it. And they'd go in there and do it, get a discount price, wait and do it early in the wee hours in the morning. I think it was that's what I was doing, doing when this happened. They were somewhere, it had been raining several days, it was out in the van. And they was out there, and Gary said, man, I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. And Bob said, man, that ain't nothing to eat. He said, man, I'm starving to death. And he said, Alan was over eating these hot peppers. Alan was a hot pepper freak. And Bob said, Alan was over there just taking <laughs> little bites and eating them, you know. And Gary said, man, I'm starving. And Bob said, that ain't nothing to eat, man. <laughs> he said, he told Alan, he said, man, give me one of them damn peppers. I said, Gary, <laughs> you don't want these peppers. He said, oh, I said, give me one of them damn peppers. I said, I said okay. Bob said, he reached down in there. This way, Bob done. Reached there and pulled out. Okay, there you go, Gary. <laughs> so Gary took it and chomped half of it. See, he turned red as that sign behind Gary's head. <laughs> <laughs> Coughing, gagging. He said, give me something to drink. He said, ain't nothing to drink, man. And he said, like I say, it's been raining, you know. He said, Gary jumped out and run over and was laughing up water out of a mud puddle. Do you know what kind of peppers they were? I don't know. He said it was hot, though. Oh. <laughs> Maybe those North Carolina Reapers or South Carolina Reaper or something like that. That's supposed to be the hottest pepper. I think. Oh, good man. Yeah. There's Reaper. another funny one about Gary. He said it was up north somewhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I rise motel and said back then it was real tight on money, you know. I said I think Ronnie give them ten dollars a piece to live on all week, you know. Yeah. Um, and they would, you know, they peanut butter sandwich or whatever they could do to survive, you know, cheap as they could. Said that they was up there one night and they looked down on the on the streets there was a black guy foot racing for money. And mm-hmm. they said, Oh man, said so and Gary and Bob said he knew Gary was the fast thing on two feet, you know. He said, I'll put they all put their money together and bought Gary a pair of running shoes and went down there and placed bets on on Gary. So he outrun every one of them. 
He said, really? all week long, they was drinking beer, eating pizza, smoking cigarettes. You hear that one, all of them, you know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. And Gary wasn't real tall. I would think Alan would outrun everybody with those long legs. Oh, yeah, I know. It. Yeah. He said, Gary, well, yeah, yeah. He said, Alan can run, too, yeah. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> Craig, what are you doing? He's showing all his Christmas, his birthday presents. <laughs> you showing off your birthday presents? Oh, no. Oh, Craig, look at that. Now, that's a present you can use. He says, don't send me. <laughs> now, he's showing off all his presents. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's me oh, and Bob. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's some oh. picture that he found in the basement one time. One down there in that, with him and the wife with the bear. Whoa, it went too fast. What are we doing? Was that Marsha to the left yeah. of him? Yeah, okay. if I get it in my store, I'm going to. Oh, that's Peter's crazy. That's why I, I want to do this on my phone because my computer is. Lord, <sighs> you don't want that, right? Can you okay. see that? Um, yeah, we can see that. My wife, Deb. Yeah. Oh, that's your wife. Oh, she's beautiful. Yeah. Very pretty. Your wife is gorgeous. Um, thank you. <laughs> tell her thank you for giving you time to do this. When when you said when uh, Bob left the band, you said he started to read the Bible. Right? Yeah, well, it it started the Bible thing. So he didn't ask start, but back when he stayed at the house a lot of times, Leon would say, "Oh, we're moving out," and Leon would read Bob the Bible, and Bob said he loved it. He loved to hear them stories because he didn't know nothing about the Bible, whatever. And Leon would actually read the Bible. So in his later years, Bob started reading the Bible, studying the Bible, and you know, get closer to the Lord. And, and I got to say, Bob wasn't religious. Well, he told me he's not religious. He wasn't belong to one religion. He was real spiritual. Does that make sense? Oh, God. You know, yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, <laughs> as far as you know, like, when he flipped out and everything, I was saying them and everything. I think, he, you know, he might have had, I'm thinking he had some kind of a spiritual gift where he can kind of sense evil stuff and spirits or whatever. I don't, they might think I'm crazy, but there's such a thing, you know, uh, it's cause it's, you know, but yeah, he, he, he saved the Bible in his later days. And, uh, the Bible's all about peace and love. And that's one thing that inspired, inspired me him by him. He was about peace and love, man. He lived it. If he was mad at somebody didn't like it, he wouldn't say nothing about nobody. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh. I, it really inspired me, and I try to live my life like it every day, you know, like that now. But uh, yeah, he read the Bible a lot in his later years. He got where he'd read it, study it, and, uh, and he had told me he had said one time back twenty years ago. He said, you know, he had done their thing, their thing in the life he wanted to do. But what most important thing to him at that time is when he died. You know, he had maybe he done it good enough for the Lord said, come on in, good job, you know. And so when he died, man, I, he didn't got to that point. I'm sure he, he made it, you know. Oh, I'm sure. Hey, I mean, did he, did he, he talk out. much about the hell? I got a picture of the hell house there with me. Did did Bob talk about the hell house much? Yeah, yeah, he did. He, you know, he told me he stayed there. As a matter of fact, uh, when we had went down to Jacksonville, Years ago, I think it was 2002. Matter of fact, he had went down there, um, and they had a festival going on down there. I forget the spiral, something about the fallen hero, something Gene, and I think John H. Wood had got together and done. It went as a three day event. We went down there with him, and we went out there to Hell House property. And uh, Tony Beasley and Rick Brawls was working on the documentary about Skinner and all the original members. And they went out, went out to the Hellhouse property, and they was filming Bob for the documentary. And I'm filming them, filming Bob, and uh, that's when he was telling about you know the most important thing to him about when he died and everything on that when he's standing there on the dock. But the Hellhouse, you know, was already burnt down. There was a chain link fence where it used to stand, and he, I got you know, I got footage of him standing there, you know, telling stories and all that. But yeah, he he talked about the Hellhouse a lot. You know, all of them, 
a lot of music was made down there, you know. By all, they barked up about all of did he did he say anything about when Leon went out and threw through that through that boulder at that bull hit the bull between the eyes and knocked the bull out? Yeah, and that yeah, bull right the door, standing right there at the door. From yeah. that from then on, that bull that would mess with everybody but Leon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That yeah, bull would not mess with door. Leon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody hit one of the cows or something down there and knocked it out, and they thought they killed it. <laughs> yeah. It might have been a bull. I don't know. So that, I'm was, guy that was Leon. Yeah. Dude, that big bull, bull, that bull was messing with Leon. Leon picked up a big rock and threw it, hit that bull right between the eyes, knocked it out. <laughs> Leon thought he killed John's bull. <laughs> <laughs> from then on, that bull wouldn't mess with mess with anybody but Leon. He wouldn't mess with Leon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Leon they killed that bull. <laughs> yeah, we was down there. And Bob said that was his actually his first home. You know, you know, for him by himself as far. But he said her a lot. He said her a lot, a whole lot. You know, he said they, the guys would uh, come at eight o'clock in the morning and say to eight. Nine ten o'clock at night, all day long they practice down there, mm -hmm. and they go home, get a little sleep, come back, same thing every day. Yeah. They worked up down there. There was a guy that lived up the street. I was telling on on one of the uh, interview I seen said that his kids went down there to go fishing, uh, check some, go fishing in the creek one day. They said you got down there. Said they come by and run and said, Daddy, Daddy, you won't believe it. Said a whole creek is full of naked hippies. They were there skinny dipping. <laughs> 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 but they said people on the tracks would sit across all down the railroad tracks, listen to them practice every day. Oh and my was, god. You know. But it was it was it was pretty wild that when we went down there back then. Now it's different if you go down to Hell House property back then. So all that development come and it was still, you know, farm property. Man, you could feel the spirits down there, man. It was, it's a wild, I mean, it's, I, I got, like I said, I got a clip, a video I, I took down there, man. But you could feel everybody's spirits, man. Well, really? you, was, you could feel Ron and everybody's spirits. You really could. Oh, wow. I mean, like I said, he was, brought, Bob had got real spiritual and he had a lot of spirits around him all the time. Some of them were good. Some of them were evil, you know. Hmm. It seemed like the evil spirits were always after him. As far as the demons, yeah, there was demons after Bob all the time. I, I I seen it, you know, and it freaked me out. I've never been around, and I don't freak nobody out, but I've been around him and stuff. I seen freak me out. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah. And I never, I never experienced nothing like that. So it got me a little closer to the Lord, you know. I don't know. If you know. Wow. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think it had anything to do with? When he saw the exorcist, or was this something well, prior to that? It, it might have helped, you know, because, you know, I remember when I seen the exorcist, when it come out, you didn't see movies, you know, certain stuff like that, you know. A lot, there wasn't a lot of movies. I know it scared me to death, I'm saying. But mm -hmm. uh, it contributed to a lot of it, the fear. But I can tell you a funny story about the first time he met Leonard Blair is, um, <laughs> <laughs> Him, Leon. <laughs> he was walking to him, and he said, "Hey, Sorry. he seen her. It scared him to death, you know." <laughs> it <laughs> did. Did. Uh, did she date Dean? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he said, him That's Leon. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't she stay at your house or something, Craig? Or who was she staying with? For, oh, I think she, she stayed, stayed with, with me. Was, yeah, she stayed yeah. at my apartment with yeah. Chad. Yeah, okay. stayed in Chad's room. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did he have to get? Did he have to get sage after? <laughs> <laughs> then it was cool, man. We're you know, I haven't yeah. talked for a few years, but we we're, I think we're still good friends. Let's mm. see why not. <laughs> So that whole thing with, the, I know that the last guest, uh, Robert Lamb, he talked about how 
he saw some bad things. There were different sides of Bob. There was like the oh, yeah. demon Bob, and he saw that. He didn't want to go into detail yeah. on the podcast, but oh yeah, he told, yeah. He told me something that okay. was pretty disturbing, and he didn't want to obviously hurt any of his family members. So he didn't want to talk about it on the podcast, but he said that oh. there was things that there were things that are very very like a chill he felt around Bob and just oh, in the air. There was horrible things. I was air around Bob. You could feel you could feel the spirits and stuff around Bob. And then, oh wow! I, I video. There's a lot of orbs going across the screen behind him and all around him. That's wow! Stuff. I mean, you could. I mean, my arm, my arm standing on my arm and talking about it. But you could feel the spirits around Bob. There's always spirits around him. So like I say, some good, some bad. Wow. You know? Did he so, wear yeah, a religious? Did he wear a crucifix? I see you're wearing a cross. Did he wear one? Oh, Bob did. I always wore a cross. Yeah. You know? If I were he, I would have also always worn a crucifix because, um, yeah, wow, that's that's something. That's and he, had, yeah. he said he had a lot of battled a lot of demons and oh yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, as far as the demon part, I, when I seen they freaked me out. It did. Yeah, it really freaked me out the demon stuff. But a lot of it had a lot to do with his bipolar. You know, if he, he had to take uh, mood stabilizer. If he wasn't on that medicine, oh, he was all antsy and that, you know, agitated, and he wasn't fun to be around when he wasn't taking his medicine right. But, you know, many times I was around when he would take, but, you know, he just dealt with it. But, uh, but Bob was really, like I say, he, he was thinking he was just crazy and you know, all that. No, Bob was a really smart guy. He was real smart. He had a lot of books smart because they, you know, quit school and all that. But he had a he had a IQ, IQ. He was a real smart guy, nice as fellow can ever be. He was a friend's friend, friend. If you had a friend of Bob, you were a friend. Yeah, uh, he was I believe true, that. And, and he couldn't trust nobody. Everybody wanted something for Bob. Oh. But there's two people in this world that never wanted that for Bob. That was me and my wife. We never took nothing for Bob. You know, he gave me a couple hats. I'm like, that's fine. But, a lot many a times, you know, Bob was on band hours. He was there for all night long. You know, I had to get four o'clock morning every morning to go to work. You know, uh, he called me all day and night, and sometimes he called and having a fit one my one morning two o'clock morning he called having a fit. And he was I think his office me is too. I ain't got no cigarettes hanging on the cigarettes. I said, Bob, hang on, I'll be there in fifteen minutes. I went. Stop and got him two or three packs. Oh, he said, by the way, yo, bring me a 12 pack of coke. <laughs> so I get over. I go, I will. Work. No one, I got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning anyway, I go to work. And I walk, I open the knock door. Come on in, yo. He sat at the kitchen table, cigarette in hand. Small cigarette, and this is kind of giggling. I said, Bob, where'd you get that cigarette? Oh, I found a pack. He said, I just want to get you over here. He just want me to get me over to hang out. And I Aww. stay, with, and, you know, on the work, you know. And it was just um, like, you know, and he just want he, he actually wanted me to come work for him full time as a caretaker or whatever and pay my salary. And I kind of wish I had, you know, like, this is like a year before he died. I wish I wish I had now and spent more time with him because he would pray for the rain. Because back then I, wrote, I drove a regular dump truck, good rain, work a lot of rain. He'd pray for the rain. So when I come hang out, and he told me, he said, I want you to go me as be my caretaker. He said, you don't have to do nothing. Just hang out with me. Might change the light bulb or something every now and then. I pay your salary, you know. I was tempted, but you know, I had my regular job. And I said, Bob, I got, I got to have something. You know, if something happens, you get mad at me or something, man. I, you know, <laughs> but I wish I had now. I really did. Had spent more. But I said he had his own bedroom in our house. You know, even back in the day, and even to the, like, you know, even in the later days, and he knew he could come to my house and. Get away from anything and everybody. I won't let nobody get around him and come to him. Oh, you know? oh. And he loved it. He said, when he spent night at my house, he said, a lot sleeping in heaven, you know, because it's peaceful and quiet. Nobody. Uh, but if Bob had many chapters in life, and I was fortunate enough to be in two different chapters. You know, like I say, when we first met, we hung out and we were very close. Me, him, wife, Marsha, all four was all real tight, you know, for several, two or three maybe four years, and then a couple of years, they we kind of got apart for a couple of years, and I got my back together and everything, then we got back together, and it was just like it was before, you know, it was me and, but as Marsh passed away, it was just me and him and the wife, and it was, and I'm glad we did, because when, when she died, he loved that woman.
He loved that woman more than anything. What did she die from? I'm not really heart. sure. I heart attack or something. I'm not really sure. How old uh, was she? Uh, how old was she? About the same age Bob was. I can't remember. I can't remember. She was, it, when the time she died, maybe 60, I guess, and, mm. or something around there. But uh, actually, he died, man. He pretty much gave up. Man. I, I really truly believe if I ain't come back in life, he might not last that long because right there at the end, he was starting. He done livening up and everything and enjoying life against the same light. But, you know, I guess the good Lord, it's time, and it was, it was time to go, you know. But he was down and out really bad. He missed her so much. He still missed her, you know, even though after mm-hmm. I come back. But I'm just glad I could have another chapter in his life, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a really good guy. They don't make they don't make him like Bob anymore, you know. But uh, like I say I got a lot of let me say a lot of footage. But yeah, I would love people to come come look at my channel on YouTube and subscribe. And Absolutely. Check out some of my clips. I got a Bob Town joke. He was a funny guy. Man, he kept me laughing all the time. He knew some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> he tell you a joke. He tell you a hundred times. Every time it's funnier. Every time he tell it. Is as fun or if it was the first time he told him. Yeah. <laughs> did he ever did he ever tell you a story about Craig? Did he ever talk about Craig? Not really. I, I mean, no. I didn't. Not really. <laughs> All right. Any Good. funny stories? With Craig? <laughs> so I'm was there anything? That. <laughs> so Yogi, if, you know, for people who did not, you obviously were very close friends with him and you really valued his friendship. So for people like one thing that you think you'd really want people to know about Bob that people didn't know, you know, what do you mm. think you'd want everybody to know that most people didn't know that you knew only? Oh, that's kind of hard answer. I don't, not really. Uh-huh. I just want everybody to know he was just like me and you. He was just an everyday person. Yeah. Like I said, if you know how, who he was and he didn't tell you, you would never know that he was famous. He was, yeah. Uh, I met him. Well, as a matter of fact, that's a good question because when I first met him, he was, he didn't get, nobody had heard nothing from Bob in 30 years. I think it was 2000 when I met him. Nobody had right. heard left the band. And this is the funny story, another story, is when I met him, I had just started getting computer stuff and I was on the Slinger Skinner Master Board at the time. And uh, they come over in, in Marshy. Can we talk to Bob's friends today? I said, yeah, but and she wanted to use my username, which she did. And she interacted with his friends. And I think that's how they got hooked up with Gene Odom and all these other people. And, mm-hmm. and everything. I'm, I'm thinking that's how they got through it. But anyway, there was an imposter going around at the time. We found out. We found on the computer, found this imposter. But it got so, they got on my computer so much, using my username, which I told her she shouldn't make her own, but she wanted to use mine for some reason. Uh, on the message board, Victor Management one day sent me an email threatening to have me locked up for a person named Bob Burns. <laughs> I, they thought I was, it was, they didn't think it was really him. So when the, the year we went to Jacksonville, wasn't, they seen it was really him. Because, and, and that was another story, too. They, we had planned for all four of us to go down there. It was a three day weekend event. Marsh and Bob went on a Wednesday. Me and Deborah had to work. We both had jobs. We couldn't leave. Was coming to come there Friday night. Well, as soon as Bob got there on Wednesday, there was newscasters from all over J- Florida down there, people from all over the world, even people from Japan down there for this event. And nobody's heard of Bob in thirty years. And he he was freaking out. Called yo, you didn't get the hand, get down now. I need a bodyguard, man. He said there's newscasters, people from all over the world down here. I said Bob, we can't come. <laughs> we somehow we swung it where we could leave. And get out Thursday, no matter, get out Friday, went there on Thursday night. And when we got down there, man, he wasn't, they was like three or four motels right there together. Did all the people attending the event got discounts on. And man, I was, it was, it was, it was wild. I can understand why he's freaking out. But yeah, I went down there and I was his bodyguard, man. I didn't, I didn't, for the three days, I think three nights I was there, two nights, maybe three. I never lay down and went to sleep. I, I patrolled perimeter all night. I'd walk around mm-hmm. Bob Marsh mm-hmm. room with girls that was on the side of the And my, mm-hmm. I, me and my drummer at that time would walk around with patrol perimeter. 
make sure everybody's safe, you know, because you never know. I mean, you got people, and I, I used to tell Bob about this. I said, you know, she started, because Marshall would get on there and start giving the information, personal information. I said, you don't need to do that. I said, look at John Lennon. Somebody died and killed him just to get famous. She can't do that, you know. <laughs> and uh, they, that was kind of naive about stuff like that. But anyway, that happened, and I was just leading to another story, and I forgot what it was about. But yeah. But oh, Bob was a hermit at that time. He never went out. He, he would live on band hours, stay awake at night, went out and pub or anywhere. They had a house in Woodstock, Georgia. He called it a big house where Mark and the girls usually stay. And he had a little cabin up on Lake Alatoon over here. And he would stay over there most of all the time. Well, a lot because they had a, like an on, on, and on, on and off again relationship a lot of times. But he, he would stay at the cabin most of the time. But uh, he never would go out. And I said, Bob, man, why don't you get out and play? I said, I, you one of the best drummers ever was, man. You got a hell of a talent. And people love to hear you play. And I know you love playing. You get out. And then, so we started going out. And he started going out jamming and with other bands. And, stuff, and he started liking it again. Mm -hmm. But when we first met, we'd go in the convention store. I said, you know who you just served? You just served a little scared drum. No, shut up, yo. He didn't want nobody to know who he was at the time. But after more he got out, the more he started lighting. And in the later years, oh man, he couldn't wait to he said, Hey, you ever heard of Leonard Skinner? I'm the guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he, uh -huh. he loved uh -huh. it. Oh. Oh, well, you're very lucky to have had that friendship oh, yeah. in your life. You really are blessed to have yeah, that. I yeah. I am. That's why I'm gonna put I'm gonna end up putting that. Uh, documentary completely together one day and release it. Cause I want everybody to see what you know, what kind of person what you know, I loved him. And once yeah. we met, our struck for you know a while, and I was having my video camera and Marcia said, "Hell, yeah, we just want something to sell." No, I didn't. I said, "I got something about this guy," mm -hmm. and I never sell. But you know, he told me two months we die. I said, "Yo, all them video stuff you got, if you can sell them, make some money, sell them." You know, and I thought, "Well, now I ain't gonna." Do it. But I would like to put it together for all the people to see how it is to, to know and, and to hang out with a living legend like I did. You know, I was very lucky I was. And I, like I said, I was starstruck first met him. But after we got to know him, we fell in love for him, for the person he was. Nothing to do with him being a Skinner drummer or a drummer. Nothing. Yeah. We loved him, and he loved us. And you know, he even loved my dog, not this dog, but my, my other dog. He never met this one. But he loved my other like it was his dog and we just it was family and yeah i was very 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 lucky and I'm, i want to share that you know yeah. experience with people one day and i can get it all together and finish it when i need to and it's kind of hard for me to do it you know right now but um i wish i could find somebody know how to edit videos and get them over here and hang out and i'd pay them <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i said i got a lot of videos there i'll put together i got some personal stuff i mean just a lot of me and i'm gonna cut out or just me and the wife or, you know but you know but it's got bob through you know i just gotta do a lot of editing and cutting and stuff like that you know well we'll be waiting we'll be looking forward to those to see those videos i go to youtube and I yeah. check out them little clips like, yogi cole that, you know. yogi cole yeah i already mm -hmm. subscribed and liked it so i'm a subscriber mm -hmm. to your to your channel you know i want to thank you so much did you have anything else come we've had you on for quite a while today while craig was uh, getting ready we've had you on while craig was getting ready today <laughs> 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 poor yogi i said 1 30. i was like oh it might be a little later <laughs> i wasn't too late you know <laughs> yeah i was only 10 or 15 minutes late yeah that's it that's all right then you had to then you had to prep <laughs> So um yeah thank you so did you want to I don't want to keep you on we've had you on for well, almost two hours did you want I, I'm out of time myself I could talk all day about Bob I'm out <laughs> <laughs> well if you want to hang you know what I mean we can um we can if you want to hang on with us we can do I still have the rest of the podcast that we can we can do are you able to hang out Craig do you want to go yep. into the rest of the saturday night special well hey you know <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just here for the party you know I'm yeah just... i know that i know that <laughs> <laughs> i'm but just Yogi, here just yeah, here so... for the good time you know that's that's <laughs> me good time stay for... on with us yogi and uh, <laughs> if you want to if there's anything else you want to say talk about bob you know 
jump in or we'd love to have you on again. Let me know. I'm sure everybody's going to love, you know, to have that the fact that you were on the video on the uh, podcast, but, um, but if you want to jump in, contribute anything, but I do want to, I'll just have to have some things. I do want, want to, um, I want to give a shout out to cousin Feigl, Feigl. Hope you're doing well. I know he's been <laughs> battling a health cancer and I know that he mailed a couple of dream catchers to Craig. <laughs> Craig is going to be for me. And I know that he's going to be forwarding mine. So Thank yeah, you. I have my. Well, what was I got a story to tell about that one? Hold I'm on. I'm so appreciative of anything, especially from you, boy, cousin Fajal. I'm honored to have this. Oh, that's adorable. That's beautiful. Yeah, uh, he that's sent me. He, he me sent one for me, one for you. Uh, but right. um, yeah, he sent me this, and he said when I showed it, he oh. said Griff kind of looked at it and t- kind of made a funny face, like and said it must be for an awful small dream, you know. What? <laughs> <laughs> and and I and I said, yeah, it seemed kind of sm- small for oh. a dream catcher. So he called me, and he he was kind of mad because because the pay people that where he um, ordered it from out in New Mexico, he ordered ordered one. And he hasn't heard when it was going to be shipped. But he goes, he goes when Griff made a face and said it was an awful small one. And I I ordered you a great big one. Oh, I think that's cute. <laughs> With Aww. turquoise and all kind of stuff in it, so <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, but I haven't mailed yours out yet. <laughs> Thank you, cousin Fijel. That's very, very thoughtful of you, and I we, we all but, wish yeah. you the best of health and continue to battle this. And also, um, Angela Leonard, what a sweetheart. I mean, she's so nice. She uh, she's had a little bit of health concerns, and I just want to send you know good prayers out to Angela that she you know can, stays well through this and then she also wrote to me the other day and she said her grandson was actually on his way to go down to training for the marines so god bless him god bless anybody who you know goes into the military and offers their service to our country yeah i, I told i said really? well he must have enlisted because they don't um, god, they, they don't have amazing. the draft anymore and she and she said yeah that, that that's been his dream since he was four years old to be a marine so that's you know that's pretty cool wow Wow. His name is Anthony Selvia and and God, I hope God watches over him and keeps him safe as well as all the other, the other uh, troops out there. So that's really wonderful thing. I wanted to just give a shout out to her grandson. And then a couple of weeks ago, Craig, I mentioned to you that um, there is a band, a Leonard Skinner tribute band called Street Survivors. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're from Pennsylvania and a couple of guys, Lou Carnation and Bob Varga had written to me a couple of times and they said, Hey, you know, we'd, we'd love to, we love the podcast. You know, we're going to be coming to New Jersey. We'd love to see you. And there were a couple of, um, finally, we, I got to see them a couple of weeks ago because there were a couple of concerts that they were supposed to do that were actually canceled on them. They were supposed to play the stone pony and the stone pony canceled on them. Shame on the stone pony. And then another place canceled. But anyway, I went to see them at a place in New Jersey and they were really, really, good and then they you know i never have i've never received any kind of preferential treatment i was one i was one of those one those people who had the crappy tickets in the back but they actually paid for um they actually put me as a complimentary my friend and me as a complimentary guest and we got right in and they they uh came and said i want to take a picture of you with you so i was really really shocked and honored that they wanted me to be in a picture. <laughs> so, but I want to thank uh, Lou Carnation, Bob Varga, Jay Mallet, Jake Morgan, Frank Sonsini from the Street Survivors Band. Okay, so <laughs> let's get right into the questions. And this this is from Rough Slugger. And if I didn't put him first, this guy saying, why don't you people answer this question? I've been answering, answering this question, asking this question for so long, and you're answering my other questions, but you haven't asked this one. So, rough slugger, here you go. <laughs> so, Ronnie always said he wouldn't live to the age of thirty. Craig, why did you? Why do you think he said that? And did he ever say why? Oh boy, you know, um, I guess that was just a premonition, but he sure said it. I I heard him say it more than once. Yeah, he'd never lived to be thirty. I don't know. 
Yeah, it's a strange prim premonition, but uh, yeah, it was turned out to be true. But yeah, <laughs> but you don't know why. You know, maybe, no. maybe it was lifestyle or no, anything I, like that. I don't have a clue why he would say that, but yeah, I, I heard him say it a few times. He really kind of kind of believed it. I, uh, yeah, it's kind of strange. Of course, I felt the same thing, but I'm still here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never, never thought if I knew I was going to live to be this long, I'd have took better care of myself. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I was seventy three yesterday. Yeah, I never. You know, <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter. Once you turn seventy, <laughs> you're old. It don't matter what book you look in. <laughs> Well, I'm 62 and a half, so I'm right behind. I'm not far behind you, so I don't consider myself old. <laughs> oh, I don't either. I don't I think I'm years. myself of being old, but, you know, I'm, I the statistics. <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then Tina Oresco, she writes and says, where do I ask questions for the show? Well, Tina, this is it. <laughs> Place where you ask me the question. This is where you ask the question. So what is your question? <laughs> so anyway, that's from Tina. Now, the last Saturday night special, one of the questions was, or I think I asked you about um, if any of the guys were, how did they avoid being in the draft? And um, I wasn't sure. We were talking about, I asked you, I had heard that somebody had shot their foot intentionally. And then a bunch of people wrote and they said, no, 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 no. Ronnie didn't shoot his foot. Apparently, Ronnie made the football team in high school, and on the first practice, he broke his foot, and he had to have pins put in. So that made him ineligible for the military. Did you oh, know wow. that? Oh, yeah. I, I never really um, knew specifically why. You know, Yeah, I never really um, knew. But we were all uh, um, uh, uh, among the people in the – um, um, first um, lottery, and they possibly could have been lucky like me. I was in the high 300s, so they never okay. took anybody over 300. So I would, my first time was like 350 or something, and the second time was in 330. Yeah, I was always at a really high lottery number, so I, that's how I got out of it. Luckily. Well, if you were married, been, you know, I don't know. If you were married, didn't that make you ineligible? I um, you were in college I don't or something remember. Like that? No, I no. don't remember. Huh? Okay, okay. Well, yeah. and then so a lot of several people wrote wrote in. Mickey Wilson, Patricia Len, they said no, no, he had broke his foot. And then David Rice, among other people, said that Greg Allman was the one who shot himself in the foot. <laughs> Apparently, reportedly, that the band had a foot shooting party for him, and, they, <laughs> and reportedly, the Allman Brothers became so consumed by their music and so content on and so intent on continuing that Greg deliberately shot himself in one foot to gain a medical exemption from the draft. And they said that he had studied a skeletal, a skeletal chart. Do you find the least damaging place to shoot? <laughs> Mission accomplished, Greg Allman. <laughs> and then uh, Ronnie Parker, he's asked a question for you. He said, do you remember um, 1998, a concert with Leonard Skinner Tribute Band? They played in Johnson City, Tennessee with Peter Frampton, Government Mule, Mike Tramp of White Lion, he only wants to know if you remember it because he's saying, I was at that show. Were you there? <laughs> Don't specifically remember that okay. one. No. All right. All right. Yeah. And then Patricia Lynn, she said, you know, I've seen Leon in a T-shirt that says, my grass is blue. Isn't that mm -hmm. the shirt he wears on the Street Survivors album photo? Mm -hmm. My grass is yeah. blue. Right. Yeah. She said, Did, is that because he loved blue, bluegrass music? <laughs> you know, somebody else asked that before, I think, you know, and I don't really? know, he may have, I, I never heard him listen to any blue, bluegrass music, Leon looked yeah. like all kind of music, you know. Yeah, but was he yeah, also no, a singer? I don't think so, I think it was just a t-shirt, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> uh, 
Also, she wants to know, we know that Leon sang um, back up with, he sang with Skinner, but how good of a singer was he? Did he ever do any singing on his own or with just the, uh, you know, along with the Skinner songs? God, I, you know what? I think we answered some of these questions on the last one. He, uh, he, he used to sing that Leon Russell song about, about a soldier. And, oh, uh, Okay. And then, and then somebody uh, found that song, and you know, it, yeah, it's a Leon Russell song about a soldier. And, and okay. You can, you can find that on YouTube with him singing. Yeah, he used to sing that one a lot. You know. <laughs> you know? Uh, I know yeah. we talked about somebody asked whether Alan sang uh, was a good singer, and um, I uh, never. I, I, I don't remember ever try, hearing Alan really try to sing. He might have. You know, like I said before, be like me and just kind of just like sing because it was something to do. But, you know, <laughs> you never, I'll never think he thought he was any good at it. <laughs> All right. And then Brian Dugas, he said back in July of 76 in New Orleans, a Skinner was supposed to play a concert. And there was some kind of something happened. They thought there were there was airplane trouble or something happened. Um, do you recall that? In St. Louis? In New Orleans in oh. July of 76. They said that uh, apparently there was a reference to airplane trouble. And uh, but Ron Eckerman says that there was some kind of, they announced that the band wouldn't play and that everybody started getting really pissed off. And they, but they weren't really sure what was the, oh, and then uh, somebody said that Ron Eckerman sells up the real story was that there was an argument over who was second bill after ZZ Top. So oh yeah, we killing. talked about that. I actually had an itinerary that I showed for that one because it was ZZ Top and Marshall Tucker and okay. Leonard Skinner and and um, 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 Charlie God, Wet Willie maybe and Grinder Switch or something like that. And yeah, there was oh, a, yeah, yeah. there was a mix up like of who was going to because at that time that was seventy six. All the ZZ Top, Leonard Skinner, and Marshall Tucker were all, you know, really established bands, you know, and it was like, you know, yeah. it, it, it was a thing that were, were um, was ZZ Top going to headline or was Leonard Skinner going to headline? And, and it was, uh, um, um, I, I don't remember, remember exactly how it went down, but yeah, there was something about, there was a coin toss and I do remember something about a coin toss, but then I looked mm -hmm. in my, uh, itinerary and it was never on the schedule. It was never in the itinerary. So, uh, so did Skinner it, play it, or was it canceled? No, that was never even in the, in, in the itinerary. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, okay. I, I do remember the controversy about who was, but that happened, you know, a few times where they was trying to think who was going to be, you know, open and close. And, you know, you know, a lot of times Skinner just said, hell with it. We'll just play. We'll just um, co ho headline and we'll get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. You know, <laughs> you know, it's no big deal. You know, it's, you know let, let them go on after us, you know. <laughs> just, like, they just chuckle about it. Yeah, we'll go on before them. <laughs> they might be sorry yeah. they chose to do that one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right? Try to follow you know, that. After, after we're done, the place might empty out. Out, which <laughs> happened you know uh, it really did when Leonard Skinner played and then Peter Frampton was after Skinner a lot of people left um, you know yeah seriously a lot of people left there was people leaving but you know he, he, you know Skinner was like come out with Freebird then leaves the stage and then Frampton come out going why don't you show, me the, show way. me the way <laughs> yeah and then the headlines in the paper was Skinner shows Frampton the way you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that was kind of funny yeah that stage yeah. must have been smoking after Skinner oh, yeah. got off yeah. there. Can you imagine that Peter Frampton yeah. comes out there? I don't think so. 
<laughs> yeah, but there were a few times when Skitter just laughed and said, yeah, we'll go on second. We'll just get the hell out of there. But we leave the place all empty out anyways. And it did, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> so then Jeff Kaufman, he wants to know if you ever met Yoko Ono. Because you no, talked about no, having never lunch did. with never No, met you never Yoko. did? Met John, but never met Yoko, I guess. Yeah. I guess yeah. I met that for that one late Oriental lady uh, that he used to run around with, uh, but I didn't mm -hmm. know who it was. Somebody told me who it was. I said, I said, yeah, he was with an Oriental lady. And I don't remember her name. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right, next one. A couple more here. A lot of questions been, that were sent to me a while ago. Um, do you remember? Um, the Hamburg concert in Germany, Hamburg, Germany concert in 74. Do you remember that? Were you with them in Hamburg? 74? Yeah, yeah, I was with them then, yeah. A couple of people want to know, like uh, some guy said, uh, uh, Tina Oresco, Charles Duffy, and Rock On said, man, that's the real deal, Leonard Skinner. Um, there are only a couple of songs on the YouTube. There are only three songs on YouTube. Was that a full concert? It was just, just the three songs. That was that was a full like concert. That. That, that was that was with Bob Burns. That was oh, okay. That was okay. seventy four. Yeah, seventy four in Europe. That was you know that was Bob Burns. Okay, cool. And then Jeff uh, Jeff wants to know. So the the survivors of the band who were in the road and light and lighting crew. So after the plane crash, the surviving members. What did they do? after the crash and who's still alive steve lawler uh came from peter frampton and he was on the lighting company with uh ron eckerman and steve lawler was part of the the uh peter uh, steve lawler was uh peter frampton's production manager and, okay. he, was, and he was also worked with uh ron eckerman and Ron Eckerman had him come out with the uh, with the lighting rig. Him and uh, it was uh, him and uh, uh, Mark Mark Howard, and uh, who else was on the lighting crew? I don't, I don't remember, but it was yeah. It was, uh, and uh, God, I don't want to take up more time. But yeah, it was okay. Mark Howard and and, and uh, Mark Howard and um, Steve Lawler. We're on the lighting crew, uh, okay. uh, and then uh, the, the sound crew was uh, David or, or, or Donnie Crutchmeyer, and uh, he he died from uh, he was with Shoko and he died a, a few years later. He had lung cancer, and uh, okay. who else was on the lighting crew um, or the sound crew? Um, God, I can't remember. Okay, that's all right. If it comes to you, we can go back to that. All right. <coughs> and, um, but so, there's twelve. Uh, there was twelve people. There's twelve people. There was. Um, there's twelve people that are still alive. Okay. Up, up until Kenny Peden just met, there might just be eleven now. But okay. There's like twelve people still alive. Eleven. Or, or <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Clayton Clayton Johnson. Uh, he he's the one that sent these uh, stickers for us to. Uh, he you know he kind of watched and saw we were doing this uh, podcast thing and sent me these stickers that of uh, Mitch placed around here for us to sell. You know what they look like. Uh, yeah, you showed us before. Yeah. Those are really nice. Yeah, he he's uh, living in San Francisco. He's retired. Um, and then Clayton, Clay, uh, Kevin Elson, you know, he, you know, he, you know, he's, uh, did the uh, fortune child just recently produced them and, uh, he's living in St. Augustine and he was with the band and then, uh, and then, uh, uh, Mark Frank, you know, he's, uh, he's one of the forgotten survivors that we, that we help and, uh. And uh, uh, Paul Welsh, uh, he's in, in Texas. You know, he's one of the forgotten survivors that we help. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, God, who else is there? Uh, somebody, uh, uh, I don't remember. I can't remember everybody right off the top of my head. Okay. Well, I, I didn't send these questions to you in advance. So that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna kind of say I didn't realize we had questions. This is cold, or <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna, um, I'll just do one more question. We'll save the rest for the next um, Stone Roadie concert. Um, I mean, the Stone Roadie concert, <laughs> Stone Roadie <laughs> podcast. <laughs> People have been complaining that the, the our, our new wake and bake show is a little bit short, so we'll you know, give them some words <laughs> on here. <laughs> uh, cup, real quick, so Jeff wanted to know uh, what was the name of Larry Steele's book. I got the book right here, Jeff. As I recall, as Jack I recall, plays yeah, in there. I got this a while ago from Amazon. I haven't even opened it. I mean, it's a real thick book. Um, I haven't opened it, but I do have it. And then Tina Oresco wanted to know what what my favorite book is, in my opinion. I mean, I have both of Gene Oda's books, which were amazing. I bought Paul Ab Abraham's book about a year ago. I love this book. This is a book that is just so interesting. You could go cover to cover. But I have some other cool books of Skinner, too. I have this. Well, this is Gene's second book. The very first book he wrote, he sent me back in 83. This is a great one. Whiskey bottles and brand new cars. They all have great pictures in them. A lot of pictures, I'm sure, were taken by you. Freebirds, huh. the Leonard Skinner story is a great Oh, you got awesome. all those books. My gosh. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, and then this one, Tales from the Rock and Roll Highway by Marley Brandt. That has Skinner stuff in it. So honestly, I don't have time to read books because I'm a teacher <laughs> and I, I tutor. But I like to have them. And you I don't like have them. Ron Eckerman's book there, huh? Turn I, it up. You know what? I don't have that one. Oh, wow. I don't have that. I'm going to get that. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah, I don't have it. That's Carolyn probably the only one. I hear that. I'm going to send you a copy of that. You're going to get well, who to send me a copy? They got an audio book. The audio books are really good. Uh -huh. Yeah, those are really uh -huh. good. I don't know. I think she's still doing those. Oh, I would love to have a copy. Yeah. Thank you. But um, yeah, I hear that's a really, really good book. So I don't know. I, I think they're all, they all have really interesting facts and things. And um, one more question. There are a lot more, but we're going to end it because I know that um, we've been going on for a lot. And, and Yogi, you're amazing for staying <laughs> in this meeting. Thank you so much. Um, and then the last question I want to ask you before we end is, um, oh, what's this Homer Hancock Ask, what's the status of the monument down at the uh, crash site? Do you know what they're doing? If they have they, what do you mean about the the statue situation the statue, or whatever? The yeah, statue of, of I, yeah, I have been there? heard. No, uh, all right. Yeah, there. I don't know what's what's going on. I guess. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'd like to <laughs> start to try to do something there, but we're trying to help right. out. To help out the forgotten survivors. We don't have, we yeah. don't have, yeah. <laughs> don't have the resources to do a statue. I wish we did, but you know, we can get yeah. a million subscribers. Yeah, maybe we can handle all that. <laughs> I know but, a lot of people were dissatisfied with the way that thing looked. That Brandon. Um, it didn't offend up. me. I mean, it was um, you know, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. I mean, <laughs> <you> no, <know? laughs> I mean, a statue would be great. That was Brandon Miller's, you know, first, yeah, you know, first, you know, intention. But you know, it's just, you know too expensive, and we just couldn't mm -hmm. come up with the money, you know. So uh, okay, well, yeah. all right. So anyway, I'm really yeah. happy to have done this today, and um. I'm glad that we got Craig on the podcast, even though he was he's been recovering <laughs> from his big birthday celebration with the groundhog as a groundhog. And Yogi, thanks so much for all of your time and for you know for giving us these wonderful stories, which everybody will enjoy. And I'm sure that this podcast will get a lot of positive feedback. And maybe we can have you on again sometime. Sure. sure. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. So with that, Craig, I guess you're gonna sing to us, right? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. Kathy always pushes me. <laughs> we don't, we don't.
<laughs> Which what 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 well now we got happy. another what now we got another one and I don't mind that one yeah I, I like happy trails when you sing it yourself oh, okay okay <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> okay all right this has been podcast uh, 120 yeah that yeah like yeah thanks a lot um um Yogi Yogi yeah Yogi Yogi cool yeah yeah thanks uh, yeah, uh, we like to have <laughs> that other points of view. You know, that was pretty good. Yeah, people don't know a lot about Bob. We, you know, just don't talk yeah, a lot I, about Bob. I, I, like I Bob. say, I, you know, I, I only did, you know, a few months with, with Bob, and I just, you know, like I said, he, he, he really cut it up with uh, Leon and, and oh, Billy yeah. more than, more than anybody, but. Uh, yeah, happy trails to you <laughs> until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep <laughs> token until then. See you later, alligator. At the wild crocodile. And we're out of here. Thank you for tuning in to the Stone Roadie Show and cut. Hi. <laughs> Oh. oh, come on, we're stopped there. <laughs>